The record for the world's strongest chin has just been broken again. 95% ABV, 95% ABV. It does not make sense at all. Or does it? Let's find out. Hi guys and welcome to another episode of High on Gin. In this episode, I'm going to take a look at the new arms race in the gin world. The battle of being the strongest gin in the world. With this title comes a prize which is pretty obvious, publicity. And in these days, with a tsunami of new gins being released every single day, standing out is pretty important. Does it work? Well. Here I am, at least, doing a review, so I guess it works. But I'll try to review this little fella here as any other gin. I'll try it neat, and I'll try it as a gin and tonic. So let's see how the gin is performing in that test. But before I come to that, let's have a closer look at this arms race. You know, we're all used to buy gins that holds an ABV between uh, 37.5 and let's say 48, some, somewhere in that range, right? And some of us are familiar with the navy strength version of gins, uh, which is about uh, 57, 58% ABV. And back in the day, some of the distillers even passed that magical navy strength ABV line, releasing gins at 60%, like the Hiram Walker gin, the Scottish uh, Blackwood 60, and the, even Finchbury did a 60% ABV gin. These gins were only overpassed by a gin called Olympic's Old Caribbean Gin. That was, well, it was a 13-year-old cask version of a gin at 65.6% ABV. So, for many years, the strongest gin in the world was around 65% ABV. But in 2015, the Swedish distillery called Schmergen Distillery, normally known for their uh, whiskies, launched this one, the Strain on Cut Strength, a gin that smashed the 65% ABV mark and came in at 76% ABV. The gin was launched as the third gin uh, in the line that they had. They had a Merchant Strength, a normal gin at 47% ABV that they used for gin and tonics. They had a, a Navy Strength uh, at 57% that they used for heavier cocktails like the Martini. And then they released this one, the Uncut Strength Gin, that they would recommend be, being uh, enjoyed uh, neat at room temperature or frozen. But after three years on the throne, the Swedish distillery was challenged by several uh, distilleries. And in February 2000, uh, 2018, the Scottish Twin River Distillery, or D Distillery as they're known uh, for today, joined the arms race and introduced their Naked Gin Uncut Edition at 77% ABV, or 1% more than this guy. And why, you may ask? Well, according to the distillery, when the master distiller Liam Pennycook tasted the uncut spirits straight from the pot still, he decided that it was too good not to share. So, a new sheriff had taken over the throne. Not because only a couple of months later, these guys came back in July 2018. They fought back with a striking blow introducing a new version of this one called the Strain Ultra Uncut Gin at 82.5% ABV, 82.5%. Per Kaldenby, the master distiller of Smirgen Distillery, I think he knew the value of being number one, so of course he had to fight back. His original uh, uncut strength had actually created this whole new category of gin that was you know, getting more and more popular with high-end bars and true gin nerds that were seeking you know, new experiences with gin. So, uh, the Swedes had the title for about two years until this, game ca this guy came along. The Anno Extreme 95. So, let's have a look at this little fella here, the Anno Extreme 95. At 95% ABV, it is ex ex exactly that, extreme. 
Anno Distillery in Kent in England is owned by Dr. Uh, Andrew, uh, Andy, sorry, Andy Reeson and Dr. Norman Lewis, two scientists who in 2011 took the decision to pursue their passion for craft spirit and opened uh, Kent's first new distillery in 200 years. The guys from Anno uh, uses their uh, lifelong science background that gives them a practical understanding of the equipment's uh, capabilities and getting the most out of the local and common gin botanicals. With the Anno Extreme 95, these guys can not only call themselves doctors, now they can also call themselves the Gin Kings of Strength. And you may say that this is a pretty small bottle, only 20 centiliters, especially if you, when you know that you pay 30 pounds for this little bottle here, which is the equivalence of 33 euros or 40 US dollars. But if you compare the bottle to a normal size bottle at 50 centiliters, they both contain the same amount of units of alcohol, around 19 units. A unit is, uh, is defined as 10 milli, milli, millimeters or uh, 8 grams of pure alcohol. And in the test I did, I made a normal gin and tonic with approximately 15 centiliters of fever tree Indian tonic, a lot of ice, and this time no garnish. And we only needed 2 centiliters of this very extreme gin instead of 5 centiliters of a normal gin and tonic to do the same strength of a gin and tonic. Anno claims that their gin is so much more packed with flavors, so you would actually just need half a centiliter of gin in a gin and tonic to get the same amount of flavors, but that's another story. But enough about the talk, let's take this gin to the test. And here, of course, I needed a guinea pig. So let me introduce you to my beautiful wife, Mede, who has agreed to help me out with the testing. And what she didn't know was what we were going to test today. And I wanted it to be a surprise. So let's see how that went. Okay guys, let me introduce you to my beautiful wife, Mede. Hello. Uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for being my guinea pig. Thank you for inviting me. Yep. A bit strange that we're doing this in English, but <laughs> that's the way it is with this channel. Yeah. So, uh, I want us to test this, and I haven't told you what it is that we're having. So I thought, since it's Christmas time when we're doing this recording, I thought it'd be a surprise. And this is, you know, time of a surprise, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, sometimes when you know what you're having, you have all these, you know, ideas of what and stuff like that. So let's have this as a surprise. Yeah. And I want us instead, you know, when we normally taste a gin, we do the neat tasting first and then we have a gin and tonic, but let's do it the other way around, just and for fun of it. Why are we doing this? Yeah, so you don't, you, you taste the gin and tonic first and then, because I don't want to reveal what's in the, the gin, so just okay. have it as it is. Okay, so let's have this. Be before, and maybe, I don't know if the audience can see this, but... Wow. It's very, very cloudy. Yes. So, let's have... Uh, uh, let's taste it or smell it. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. What do you think? Mm, I like this. It's very classic. Yeah. Mm. Sure. So a lot of flavors, a lot of flavors. And a lot of citrus. Yeah. Mm. So I think it's like the grapefruit that's coming in here, like really like a boost. Mm. It's, uh, it's very uh, juniper heavy. There's a lot of flavors. It's super, super packed with, mm. with flavors. Mm. It's very good. I it's think very it's fresh. very fresh, mm. very intense, super fresh. And uh, we're drinking this with this um, uh, fever tree uh, Indian tonic. So it has a slight um, bitterness to it that really plays along perfectly with these citrus notes. But I thought, you know, when we do a, a gin testing at home, we normally have the gin uh, neat. So I thought we should, we should do the same here and see what we think. Mm -hmm. So I poured us just a, a little thing. So if you swirl the glass and remember to put your nose on the opposite side of the, uh, yeah. the glass here. So. Wow. Ooh. 
A lot of intensity. Yes. Yeah. It's a flavor packed gin. Yeah. Cheers. Ready? Sure. Let's do it. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's strong. What is this? <laughs> you like it? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I do, but it's um, it's very strong. Yeah. It's um, kind of fire <laughs> in my mouth. <laughs> yeah? Well, you got something right there. But actually, it's uh, sweet at the same time. Yeah, right. Mm? That's interesting you say mm? that. because. Let me show you what it is. <laughs> it's still burning. You can feel it on the way down. It's this little fella here. It is wow. actually the, the strongest gin in the world. It's 95% ABV. It's still there. Yeah. Wow. But this is so good, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's got this, as you say, sweetness. It's very, very surprising that it's actually so sweet. Yeah. And it's almost like it has this licorice uh, in it. It has a lot of <laughs> a lot of oiliness to it. Mm -hmm. And it, when you when it comes into your mouth, it's not like it explodes immediately, but after a second or so, it's like you swallowed a grenade, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love this gin. I yep. really, really think it really, really works. But Sorry how for... much did you put in this? Yeah, so I only put two centiliters okay, in this. Because this is very... Yeah, so strength-wise, it's a normal gin and tonic. Yeah. Flavor-wise, it's more packed with flavors. It's really, really hugely packed with flavors. But how come it's so sweet at the same time? Yeah, this... that's that's a funny thing. And I, I really don't have the answer to, uh, to that. I think it's just the enormously high alcohol percentage that makes this expression that, you know, you're just, you know, getting all these flavors boosted. So, there yeah. you have it. Very good, but take care of this little guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a sneaky little bastard. Yeah. Like me, I guess. But <laughs> thanks again, thanks. Well, there you have it, guys. The new Gin King of Strength. If you want to try the new Anno Extreme 95, you need to have a friend in the UK as I did. Thank you so much to Bias for helping me out. Because this gin does not get shipped outside the UK, or at least for now. What remains to be seen is, of course, what will these guys do? If Per Keldenbu is willing to give up the throne, or if he will try to reclaim it. What do you say, Per? Ready for a remake? Extreme, extreme. What do you say? Well. Well, only the future will tell us what will happen. Until next time.